Some of my girls are six years old that I know of. I know Hawk, which is the black and white one in the back right there. She's uh, Appenzeller Spitzhoven. She is uh, six, six years old. I, I just saw it pop up. At least six years old, because she was already grown whenever that popped up. And that's her, that's her husband, boyfriend, whatever. He's just Appenzeller Spitzhoven Brewster. But I don't think they really like each other too much. So I come out here and I sit with them occasionally whenever I'm stressed out and I don't know what to do. And the sun's rising and it's just so beautiful. Look at it. It's just absolutely beautiful. And I've already been up a, I don't know, several hours now. And I was out here yesterday looking at my potatoes. And you can see my potatoes right here in the front and in the back. Yeah, that's weeds. That's actually ragweeds. And they'll get to be about 10 to 12 feet tall if you let them grow. So I opened this gate right here so that they can have a place to um, have more green grass and bugs and all that type thing. What are you doing back there? And uh, they're really enjoying it, but they're not going in too far. I was a little bit worried about putting them out there because I've got those two apple trees. But they're not bothering the apple trees at all. And last night I was looking out my window and I saw a couple of deer back there. They live back there. They have a little house back there. You can, you can see it when you go back there. And uh, all of this, you know, it doesn't take but, I don't know, three weeks. I decided that it was raining and it was cold at night and my garden wasn't going to do anything anyway because it was deep in water. And so I started, my, my front yard is a lot higher than back here. So I decided that I was going to go up front and I was going to work on my flower beds. And I bought that load of dirt and I used it everywhere that I could use it and um, ended up having to quickly unload it so that I could go get my bags of feed. I had to get 22 bags of feed. It cost me $317, which is quite a lot, especially when they really don't even pay for themselves right now. Well, they haven't for a while because I've got new babies coming up. Well, I've got babies here, but they're, they're, they're growing, so that's extra. And uh, I still need to do some hay hawk. Hawk is cleaning me up. She, she has to come over and clean me up. So yeah, she's every day when I come out here. But um, having the turkeys is extra food. Having the uh, rabbits is about 60 bucks a month just to feed them. And then, what are you girls doing over here? That's, that's the babies. Most of them. The little ones that's running around acting crazy. Because their chickens, their hens, actually lets them come out now. And uh, you can see them over there running like crazy. And occasionally they'll get too close to one of the hens and the hen, the food, and the hen will peck it on the head and it'll take off running and the hen will go ahead and eat. But that's just how they take care of life. There's Scout out there with the girls and there's Captain out there too. I was um, sitting here a minute ago and looked up and saw a, a hawk. It was a small hawk, but it was a hawk. It was over here on the, um, well, on this, this wood that's back here. You can see those trees, it's down. It was up on there and it flew off over into that tree right there, into the bottom branches. And I had just looked up and saw a, a little bit of a the motion and looked over there and, and saw it, but already the roosters had already said, no. Ah! what they do and I said yeah and all the hens started clucking I'm like yeah that's right that's that's what's going on right now and you're quick and you saw it so I'm looking at all of this and I'm thinking you know I be, I bite off too much I, I can't chew as much as I bite off 
I've got my potatoes here and they're starting to crack and so the, the ground is starting to crack so that means that they are actually making some potatoes is what my mom used to say. I need to go out there and check on them but it looks kind of snaky to me so I don't even know if I want to go out there right now or not and with those uh, weeds up there. Ugh. You know, if it's not bed bugs, it's ants is the old old saying. And I just, you know, I'm I'm get like I keep saying, I'm getting ready to turn 70 next year, and this is is kind of uh, eating my lunch. You know, I'm uh, not walking good anymore. Um, I was walking really really well, and the really really well walking and walking right and trying to um, correct my walking from walking like a duck and a, or a penguin to walking like a normal person has got my knee hurting my only knee that's mine hurting really bad by the end of the day i can't walk and so it makes me wonder what am i doing what am i doing to myself i'm sitting here i am enjoying myself so much look at here i've got a tree right behind me i'm sitting here on my chair and and just looking at my animals and loving on them so much and just watching what they do and thinking if I have to go in and have my knee replaced what am I going to do? Who's going to feed my chickens? Who's going to water my chickens? Because I did this with two hip replacements. I didn't do it with my knee replacement. I was living somewhere else and I had help. But since then I've moved back home and I'm alone. And I can do this as long as it's, as long as my health holds out. But what then? What happens if I have to go in and have my knee taken care of? That's a, that's a hard recovery. I mean, that's, that's a very hard recovery. I had my first knee done in 2011. And it's just now to where it's not hurting anymore. And that's a long time to be hurting course my knee was was botched and um so that that was kind of a big deal and uh took me i don't know six months to get back to work after i had that surgery had to have it manipulated manipulated and all kinds of things so this time i'm not using that doctor i don't care what he is, who he is or what everybody says he is I want to go back to the same doctor that I had. What's he doing to her? Well, she doesn't like it. Well, I guess he's mating with her. I've never heard a hen do that. She just doesn't like him, I guess. But, um... Hawk. <laughs> my little hawk. She's my girl. She is such a sweetie. But, um... How do you know what to do? I just got 10 green eggers, uh, Easter eggers, I guess you call them, um, in March. And I just got 15 more baby chicks three weeks ago and two baby turkeys. So now my flock is up, what, 24 more plus, plus turkeys. And that means more work, more money, more effort. And if I can't do it, what then? And so I'm having to really think hard about what I'm doing and, and why. I have I planted the trees this year because I thought, well, that's going to be good for me for later. And it will be. You know, everything I'm doing right now is going to be great for me later. But how much longer am I going to be able to do this? They're, they're sure liking their, uh, their water over there. Liking that water that I made for them. And, you know, and the thing is, too, I, I, I try to ebb and flow with the way that, that my community needs eggs. So when, when eggs were scarce, I, I bumped up my, my animals, how many more I had. You know, I keep buying more. And those animals, some of those animals get older and they don't lay. That's just all there is to it. And, and some lay and some don't. I've got some that lay in the winter really well. And I've got some that lay in the summer really well. And so, therefore, of 
hopefully I, I planned it to where I have eggs all the time, but that's really not how it worked out. And now the feed prices are still sky high. Nothing's changed. It, it's like it's even more this time than it was last time per bag. And now you can go to Aldi's and get five dozen for like two dollars. <laughs> how do we how do we compete with that? You know, I mean, it's like I haven't changed my prices because I really, really need to be able to, to, I mean, I'm not getting paid for any of the work I do. I'm not getting paid for any of the, of the bedding that I buy or, or any of the, anything else that I'm doing. Um, the fencing that I have to buy to put them here and then put them there and grow grass here and then grow grass there so that they always have, you know, nice grass to eat to help supplement their, their bills, their, their, uh, their feed. But I, I don't know, you know, how, how people do it. I mean, if you don't have a big farm where your chickens can get out, and it doesn't really matter if they um, pull this off and they can eat it and I can see my, my girls better from here. I don't have to get up and hurt my knee to walk. But how do people do it? You know, I mean... I guess I guess the ones who who don't who can't do it just to have two or three and they just have enough for themselves. I guess my problem is is I want to help everybody and and give them a good value. As a matter of fact, it took me a long time to go from three to four dollars, and it took me a long time to go from four dollars to five dollars a dozen because I did not want only rich people to be able to afford eggs when they were seven, eight, and ten dollars a dozen. And they appreciated that. But now, eggs are down to two dollars a dozen, and I've, now I'm getting all these eggs, and I have, I asked, you know, the ones, some of the ones on my list that's, that want, had to have eggs so bad, only liked mine. You want to need eggs? No. I don't need eggs this week. No, I don't need eggs this week. So I'm going, okay, so I got all these chickens so I could help my community. And then when eggs get really, really cheap, my community goes to that one. So what do you do? Do you continue on with all of these chickens and, and all of these eggs? Or do you, what do you do? Because I'm now retired. I'm on a, a very small budget. And three hundred and seventeen dollars is a lot of money, and my knee hurting takes down the time that I have to to help because now I have to stop and go in and and just absolutely almost cry with my knee aching. So, with all of that, um, I'll let you go, but. I just, I don't know. I don't know about the YouTube channel. I don't know. I just don't know. Right now, I'm just kind of in a state of flux. And it takes a lot of courage to just be able to get on here and and make a video. Because it's like, I see all of these things that I want to do, and I used to be able to do, and I know how to do, and I can do it. But I can't do it by myself. Not anymore. Not all of it. So the good idea fairy has to fly away and the person who needs to help everybody can't find help for yourself. And I guess then it's time to, to re-evaluate where you are and what you're doing. So y'all have a wonderful day and I'll talk to you on the next one.